it's hard to believe that we're getting the light in from the very little bit of sunlight that we have is getting bright. So, let's kill some of the light. You know, someone asked me recently, you know, why, when you have all the opportunity to do so many other things, that you could be a pastor, you could be a deacon, you could be an elder, you could uh, go out, start a church, you know, do a storefront ministry, be a missionary, um, be supportive, be a musician, yeah. There we go. You could be a musician. Hey, no problem, man. We could do it, right? <laughs> or be a prophet, be an elder, be all these things in the church with, you know, you've got the credentials, you've got the ability, you know, you're, you're a talker. You seem to know the Lord, you know, sort of. Why do what you're doing free? Why not put a just a little link, you know, a little a little piece of code, you know, so that every time somebody clicks on your site or your Facebook page, you get point zero 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 one cent, you know, and or maybe make a video so you could go viral, you know. Why? Why be the least of all men? You know, why Why bother trying to get it out to some place that somebody else hasn't been or somebody's maybe already there, but they're kind of like, you know, don't really care. You know, good question. You know, why? You know, why do you do what you do, you know, in ministry? Why do you? Why do I? You know, those are legitimate questions and frankly, Sometimes I ask myself that, you know, why am I doing this, you know? I mean, the economy sucks, you know, I could go back to work, you know, and make, make some bucks, you know? Why? Of course, <laughs> the answer I always give people is, why not? <laughs> I could think of a hundred reasons why not to do all those other things and why to do what I'm doing, but really most of the time I just answer them why not, because if you have to ask yourself why, then there's really no reason for you to be doing what you're doing in the first place. Because if God calls you to do what you're doing, and he says, I want you to do this, then he already is your reason, because he doesn't tell you why, he tells you what to do. You trust him for why, and you let it go with that. You can make up, oh, I know, there's, you know, a hundred thousand different scriptures out there that you could say, oh, well, you know, you do this, and the least in the kingdom is the greatest, or the least is the greatest, and the greatest is the least, and, you know, kind of play spiritual gyrations with that. But the bottom line is just because you love the Lord, you know, you're willing to do whatever he asks you to. And that's why I do what I do. And another reason is, you see, a lot of people, I always took for granted, knew more than I did. I always presumed they were like, ooh, ah, oh, ooh, you know, and that they had so much knowledge. And I was just like, wow, if I could only be like them. And then I found out they didn't know it all. <laughs> they were just men. Buffalo on the outside, <laughs> hamburger on the inside. What can I say? And that you give a man a certain amount of time and he's going to fall flat on his face in no time at all. So the reality for me was I discovered, hey, you know what? I know just as much as anybody else does. In fact, I experienced a lot more. So God one day said, do it. And I went, okay. I know there's somebody out there recently that thinks that, oh, they inspired me into doing these videos. And I went, <laughs> no, <laughs> I've been doing this a long time, you know, but we won't go there. But the point being is that 
when you enter into ministry, sometimes you step out in faith and you tr you're testing the waters, you know, you're checking it out. You're kind of like sent out like Jesus sent out the two, you know, you're kind of learning some things about the message, about how to talk to people, about what to relate, about who you are and how you are, you know, in front of a camera or on stage or in front of people, you know. God knows that, you know, I recently ran into Francis Chan, you know, um, not personally yet, you know. I I have no doubt that if I sent that little sucker an email, he'd probably show up at my door, you know. <laughs> the guy just strikes me as being a good man of God, a man with God, and a man that's humble in the Lord. And so anyways, I, I just recently, you know, encountered some of his messages and, you know, watched him on video or whatever. And uh, I said, hey, there's hope for the church. <laughs> he's not up front, he's kind of in the middle, you know, he's kind of like churching around, sort of, you know. And he's not afraid to just kind of like walk around, do, you know, relax, not be something super weird, you know, or something way over the top or make some big show of it. But rather treat, you know, the Word of God like it's the Word of God, and God is like God, and we're not, and we're not the most important thing. But, you know, more than that, he's he's just a, a sincere man that really examines, you know, the facts. Now, I don't know what he's like in his younger days, but I just mean in his latter days, so I don't know what younger days are like for some people. I know what mine were like. <laughs> Woo! But, uh, why you are doing what you're doing is important to yourself to recognize that if you have the wrong reason, you're probably going to fall flat on it. But if you have the right reason of what you're doing and why you're doing it, then it won't affect you when people aren't as excited about or you try to build some numbers or you try to look for some response because if you're doing it for response, you might as well get out of the business, you know, it's just not what you're supposed to be doing. You see, when I started recording these videos, I recorded out of a need, mine. I didn't record them because somebody out there had a need, though I know they do. I didn't record them because I knew that it'd be a benefit to people out there, although they are, and I know they are. It's a, it's a fact, you know, the Word of God accomplishes its purpose irregardless of whether it's a jackass sitting here or me. And in some cases, the same person is sitting here. But the point is, God accomplishes his purposes irregardless of who he goes through, whether it be a... a I can't even think of the guy's name that everybody, you know, wants to say, oh, we're not sure he's a Christian. But the word of God goes out from his mouth and will accomplish salvation to some people. And then they may leave his church if they're kind of wise, you know, but, you know, personally, I don't see him as being, you know, all that wise when it comes to studying the Word of God. He's a very, you know, he didn't talk much about hell and he thinks that, you know, Mormons are Christians and all kinds of weird things, you know, weird doctrines. But, you know, he does talk about Jesus, you know, and he talks about personal relationship, uses the right words, you know. He's one of those happy, smiley kind of people that's always smiling, you know. Well, all right, you know, okay, you know, that's what you need. You know. But God uses them as he uses me, as his word goes out. Now, Jesus said it himself, so that's why we can accept it, is that Jesus said, whoever is not against me is for me. Well, obviously he's not against Jesus, he's for Jesus, so... Maybe he's all messed up on everything else, but he's for Jesus, you know. So you kind of got to let God be God and people be people, and they do their thing. But for you, why you do what you do can't be mandated upon or predicated upon who you are, what you are, and how you do it. As a matter of fact, that has absolutely nothing to do with it at all. I could be sitting in here, or I could be sitting outside, or I could be, you know, jumping up and down doing calisthenics, you know, and as long as I'm sharing the Word of God and a personal relationship with Jesus, and God is accomplishing His purposes through me to do for those who are watching His accomplishing of salvation in their life as that process of sanctification is being worked out in them from the day of salvation unto the day of sanctification when they're presented faultless before the Father with exceeding joy and redeemed by Jesus himself to give to God our Father a beautiful bride that the Father may extend back to the Son in a marriage that would be 
wonderful for us to all attend. And in that respect, then it really doesn't need or, or it really doesn't matter what we do as long as we kind of like, you know, talk about you know who. So why I do what I do boils down to a very simple premise that I've always had and it was if there's one person out there, just one, you, that watches. And if that one person, you, gets one idea from someone like me to maybe do something a little different, you know, to get up out of your pew, up out of your comfort zone, maybe head down the street, maybe go in somebody's house that you probably would not have gone into before. Maybe visit them when you don't feel like visiting them. Maybe giving them an opportunity to spend the night at your house or live with you for a while while they're in financial distress. That if there's just one person, one person does any of those things, even just once, or if they help a little old lady, like I tell my wife, if it's only about that something in their mind clicks and they think of it and they decide to help some little old lady across the street or they see some guy snatching a purse and they stop it, or whatever it may be, if they think about God at that moment, then I have done what I'm supposed to do and that's why I do it. Because if it were not for God dying on the cross, I would be in hell myself. That's why we do it. No other reason. You're not going to get kudos in heaven. I'm sorry. You know, people like to think that they're going to have some riches in heaven and they're going to be, oh, I got all this glory. Oh, I got this in the kingdom. You know what? The millennium's all about God clearing the debt, you know? But you think you're owed, you're going to get in the millennium and then you're done. You know, that's it. You know, you got your reinvestment potential back for all you prosperity people. For the rest of us, we don't want to have nothing to do with it. You know, we want to go somewhere in a garden, you know, and do a little tilling of the ground, you know, and have a little vine, have a little tree, have a little quiet time, you know, and relax for a thousand years. For the rest of you that want to have kingdoms, you're going to be in for a surprise, you know, because the same word that says kings and priests could also be a kingdom of priests. So there went your riches. But in that, we share the gospel of Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for sin and salvation has come to us for one other person then we share and do what we do because if for any other reason we're doing it we should not be doing it at all except that Jesus be known in this world in this time in this day in the simplest way that we can possibly make it for a person to understand that they can have a relationship with God Almighty through the atonement of Jesus Christ for what he's done on the cross and that forgiveness has come to the world and that is paid for by the death of Jesus and God has accepted that by the resurrection of him from the dead and that he has made propitiation he has made covering he has taken care of sin so we can come to God ourselves we can come to our Father and talk to him and know him and walk with him as Jesus said from the day that he came that he came to reveal the Father and that if we have seen him we have seen the Father so our relationship is not predicated upon some pastor some elder some deacon some prophet some church some religion or some other way to come to God except for one way and that's Jesus so why are you doing it if it's not for one it's not for any good reason at all. Streams in the desert, and I was one among the captives by the river Chebar. The heavens were opened and I saw visions of God, and the hand of the Lord was there upon me. From Ezekiel. There is no commentator of the scriptures half so valuable as captivity. The old Psalms have quavered for us with a new pathos as we sat by our Babel's stream and have sounded for us new joy as we found our captivity turned as the streams in the south. 
The man who has seen much affliction will not readily part with his copy of the Word of God. Another book may seem to others to be identical with his own, but it has not the same to him, for over his old and tear-stained Bible he has written in characters which are visible to no eyes but his own, the record of his own personal experiences. And ever and anon he comes on Bethel's pillars or Elam's palms, with which are to him the memorials of some critical chapter in his own personal life history. For that portion of scripture has become real to him, and he is a living witness of what God has done. If we are to receive the benefit from our captivity, we must accept the situation and turn it to the best possible account. Fretting over that from which we have been removed, or which has been taken away from us, will not make things better. But it will prevent us from improving those things which remain. The bond is only tightened by our stretching it to the uttermost. The impatient horse, which will not quietly endure his halter, only strangles himself in his stall. The high-medded animal, which is restive in the yoke, only galls his shoulders, and everyone will understand the difference between the restless starling of which the stern has written, breaking its wings against the bars of the cage and crying, I can't get out, I can't get out, or and the docile canary that sits upon its perch and sings as it would outrival the lark soaring to heaven's gate. No calamity can be to us an unmixed evil if we carry in it indirect and fervent prayers to God. For even as one in taking shelter from the rain beneath the tree may find on its branches fruit from which he had not looked for, so we in fleeing for refuge beneath the shadow of God's wings will always find more in God than if we had been seen or known before outside of God. For it is in God that we have the blessing. Outside of God we would never see it. And without the storm to drive us to him, we would never find it. It is thus our trials and afflictions that God gives us fresh revelations of himself. And the Jabbok Ford leads to Peniel, where, as a result of our wrestling, we see God face to face. And our lives are preserved. Take this to thyself, O captive, and he will give thee songs in the night and turn for you the shadow of death into mourning. All your life is designed and reflecting around that aspect of being the living witness of the Word of God alive and well in you. As Jesus said, I am the Word. He said that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same that was in the beginning was in Christ Jesus, accomplishing His purposes and plans that God foreordained before the foundations of the world that there should be brought unto him salvation and fruits of righteousness that would be accomplished through the preordained plan of God to bring to him sons and daughters of God that would be made unto him manifest throughout the generations and eons to come of the mercy of God and the love of God. That from Genesis all the way to Revelation it would be one continuation of the word of God revealed in his sons and daughters that have been brought as co-heirs of salvation and made like it unto the Son of God who died for them, to which they give glory to God their Father. And that is why you do what you do, because that is who you are.